Did a UFO collision cause a plane to land? We've got that and a lot more to talk about today. So get in here. This is Jack with Cosmic Road. I talk about UFOs and the paranormal. Please hit like and subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, let me just go to the immersive reader so we don't have all these ads. This is from the debrief. Unknown object punched softball-sized hole in aircraft, prompting emergency landing and FAA investigation. Few details have emerged about an incident that prompted the emergency landing of an Atlas air flight at Miami International Airport late Thursday evening following the release of a preliminary assessment by Federal Aviation Administration officials. And of course, it had to be Miami, right? Uh, according to information released by the FAA, the aircraft Atlas Flight uh, 95 experienced failure of its second engine shortly after departure uh, during uh, an evening flight on January 18th. Uh, and we, we don't really know what it was. Uh, Ground-based observers were able to see the aircraft as flames billowed from its second engine with videos surfacing online that captured the alarming scene as the blazing aircraft passed overhead. Uh, oh my God, it's on fire, a woman is heard saying in one video. Um, uh, the woman can be heard calling to her mother, wondering aloud if the plane would be attempting to make an emergency, airline, emergency landing. Excuse me. Uh, but we don't really know what it was. Um, yeah, the agency said in a statement that it plans to conduct further investigations into the possible cause of the damage that caused the aircraft's emergency landing. So yeah, something punched a, a softball-sized hole um, uh, in the aircraft, and uh, we don't know what that was. You know, maybe the engine exploded and a piece of shrapnel uh, punched a hole in it. Or maybe the uh, object that punched the hole was the cause of the uh, uh, failure in the first place. So uh, we just don't know. It's too early to tell at this point. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, could it be a UFO, maybe a dragon UFO, something like that, something very small? Uh, you know, we, we just don't know, and I'm not going to speculate uh, beyond that. Meanwhile, some people are saying something big is coming very soon. Now, people say that regularly, so take it with a grain of salt. Uh, but Tom Thompson says, hearing rumblings that something, I really don't know what it is, may be dropping within the week. Multiple people threw this at me, so I'm just putting the word out. It's apparently a pretty big story, whatever it may be. Uh, this is not a trust me bro post. Uh, I had individuals who I trust uh, send that send that my way, and I feel that giving uh, everyone else a heads up is morally sound. Uh, an observer of anomalous objects uh, responds, Tom, I am hearing this too. Not sure this is related, but Shannon Scott also mentioned something significant is going to happen. I trust Shannon and the person Shannon got this information from, so hang on to your hats. So... Big of true, guys. Something big could be coming. Seems like something big could always be coming and is always about to drop. And you know, sometimes it does. So I'm uh, really looking forward to seeing what that might be. Meanwhile, this is really interesting from Project Unity. An extremely reliable source told me that Bigelow Aerospace uh, was supposed to get control over an intact NHI vehicle for eventual transfer into more open government channels via TTSA. But the CIA shut it down, which is why TTSA and uh, uh, Bigelow Airspace collapsed. So that is a juicy story. Now, you know, we, we've heard the rumors that originally all SAP was, uh, and this is you know, not, not just a rumor, this is from David Grush, that said all SAP originally was trying to get their hands on a UFO from Lockheed Martin, and uh, the CIA interfered with that. Uh, you know, this the story seems very uh, similar to that, uh, but this seems like a more modern uh, story because uh, of TTSA. You know, back in the day, uh, you know, uh, the OSAP days when that was happening, uh, TTSA wasn't a thing. Then, you know, of course, TTSA is 
uh, Tom DeLonge's organization that he put together with some really high profile people at the time, like Lou, Lou Elizondo and Chris Mellon uh, and Hal Pudoff. You know, uh, uh, Chris and Lou have left, uh, but there are still some very high profile and interesting people uh, still at TTSA. I don't really know what they're doing these days, uh, but uh, according to Project Unity, uh, they, you know, this, this, this ongoing, uh, you know, endeavor to get uh, hands on a UFO, possibly that same UFO, uh, met with the same fate as CIA shutting it down, uh, leading to you know, the demise or the, the collapse of TTSA. So is that true? I, I don't know, but it's certainly a juicy story. But I do wonder at the similarities to the story that David Grush told, uh, which uh, is an older story. Um, could history have repeated itself because some of those same parties were trying to do the same thing and met the same result? Very possible. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Oh, and check out this amazing uh, capture of what appears to be a uh, Dragon UFOs, Dragon UAP, buzzing that helicopter. It's a rescue helicopter and it gets buzzed by, I guess, two UFOs, uh, two UAP that may or may not be uh, dragon UFOs. Uh, is that one UFO or is that uh, two UFOs? Is that one that's joined together? Kind of looks like one joined together, doesn't it? Um, a really weird dragon UFO, uh, if that's what it is. But yeah, the dragon UFOs or the dragon UAPs, uh, so-called because at first he, uh, Robert Scheip thought they were dragon dragonflies, uh, but upon further research, he became convinced they were anomalous. And uh, so he, he began studying them and capturing these things. And um, uh, that's uh, as, as larger than they usually are and a weirder shape than they usually are, but uh, not that much larger than some of them. And it's doing the same sorts of things that dragon UFOs usually do, which is buzz airborne objects. Uh, they love our helicopters. So, you know, a great capture, a great capture of something, of something. And, uh, yeah, the full story on this is that it was a, uh, yeah, a rescue helicopter helping a sinking Spanish ship off the coast of France, France in 2014. So, uh, incredible footage of some anomalous incident. Uh, let me know if you think that's a dragon or what you think that thing is. Also from Project Unity, this is really juicy. Uh, based on public information, I was 50-50 on this being real. Based on private information, for now, that ratio is now 80 to 20. And of course, he's talking about ARVs, the uh, human-created UFOs, or reverse engineer technology, gifted technology, whatever this stuff is. Uh, you know, ARV, uh, alien reproduction vehicle, is a term uh, popularized by Mark McClandish in his story. And um, I, I want to say this might be a, a schematic that Mark uh, drew up. So um, really juicy that Project Unity is now 80% uh, on uh, human-made uh, UFOs. And, you know, for my part, I'm 99.99999%. So, uh, but yeah, let, let me know what you guys think and uh, who has this stuff and what are they doing with it? Uh, and to me, that's the juicier question. Now, I'm, I'm sure they have it, uh, but what are they doing with it? Uh, you know, what does Lockheed Martin do with the UFO? Now, I mean, they're a for-profit tech company. Uh how is flying around a UFO uh, benefiting them uh, commercially? I don't get it. If they were sharing this technology, if they were selling a UFO, it would make sense for a for-profit business. So what are they actually doing with this UFO? What are other companies uh, and organizations doing with these UFOs? What is the government doing with their own UFOs? Because uh, you know they've got them. Um, you know, so yeah, what, what are they doing, guys? And the, the military isn't uh, seemingly using them during wartime. Otherwise, conflicts around the world would be going uh, more favorable to us. So uh, I, I don't get it. What are they doing with these UFOs? Let me know if you have any clue. Oh, and here's some additional information from Project Unity. This is what I have been told. I don't claim it as fact or fiction. Take it or leave it. 
The real story of ATIP was that ATIP was a front organization for TTSA to be given uh, an NHI vehicle. Lockheed Martin was going to give Bigelow Aerospace possession of this vehicle. When the New York Times in 2017 wrote that Bigelow Aerospace was setting up a private facility that would be totally secure for the storage of special materials, this was code for Lockheed wanting to divest itself of this vehicle. A deal was being done, but the CIA intervened in this process. Stop the deal. And so, according to the source, the reason why there has been a lot of false info fabrication red flags with the ATIP OSAP narrative is because this program was not for the purpose of riding dirds. It was solely established for the purpose of handing over control of NHI technology to BA and the reason why BA, Bigelow Aerospace, uh, became defunct was because Bigelow didn't get what he wanted NHI technology and gave up on the vent on the venture project unity adds I do not claim this is fact or fiction it is simply what has been relayed to me fascinating stuff speaking of Lou Elizondo Lou Elizondo is striking back at Sean Kirkpatrick I love it we got uh, Travis Taylor we have uh, various people uh, coming out again against Sean Kirkpatrick's a hit piece the other day. Uh, well, Lou Elizondo isn't one to be left out. He says, I left my job in protest. Others leave in shame. <laughs> I love it. Shots fired from Lou Elizondo uh, saying that Sean Kirkpatrick left in shame, uh, which may or may not be true. I don't know if he did. Uh, he may have just served his shift and now he's moving on to his cushy job moving from one uh, company that worked on UFO crash retrievals to another, uh, presumably making good money at both locations uh, because he is part of the control group. Uh, so I don't know if he is leaving in shame, but maybe he is. Who knows? Maybe he's lose right. At any rate, a very spicy tweet from Lou Elizondo. Meanwhile, Gary Nolan uh, has an interesting uh, series of tweets here. So I have a question for the greater community. If you happened upon a piece of technology not of this earth and discovered something novel to humans, could you patent it? One of the tenets of patent law is that the invention should be novel. Clearly, it's not novel since you found it in your backyard, let's say, and someone else already invented it. In the context of patent law, an invention must be novel, non-obvious, and useful to be eligible for a patent. The critical aspect here is that the invention should result from human ingenuity. Uh, discovering something not of earthly origin and novel to humans does not automatically qualify it for a patent. This is because patents are granted for inventions which are human-made solutions to specific problems, rather than uh, for discoveries which are findings of existing phenomena or objects. So, legal eagles, is this a correct interpretation? And if so, should anything that has been discovered from su studying such an object be eligible for a patent? Are there by current law workarounds to this apparent impasse? Uh, and he uh, g continues, I think one workaround is that if you discern principles that are somehow non-obvious, you can patent it. But if it was already obvious to someone else, it's not patentable. Does this get into areas of whether the other is human to qualify? By the way, this also starts to come into play around AI, should it ever be determined to be sentient. Uh, can they patent things by themselves as corporate entities, say? <laughs> I love it. What a juicy uh, couple of tweets there by Gary Nolan. Uh, is this all hypothetical or does he know something uh, and is putting this out there for the public to digest and to chew over? Uh, I think Gary probably knows some stuff that he can't talk about. Is this one of those things? I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Meanwhile, check out this amazing footage of possibly Bigfoot screwing up a crime scene. What? I don't know what sort of crime scene uh, was involved here, uh, but Bigfoot isn't happy about it. And Bigfoot is wrecking the scene. This is supposedly Bigfoot captured on trail camera, destroying crime scene. This is on TikTok. 
uh, and whatever it is 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 very large and strong. I'm not buying this as CGI. I think this is legit footage of something. I mean that that looks like a fairly large tree. Uh, would a human in a suit be capable of manipulating that tree like that? Um, I tend to think that no, probably not. Uh, you know, this is uh, seemingly something with vast strength, as you would uh, expect from a, a Bigfoot. Uh, definitely not a bear. A bear wouldn't be able to do that. This is something with uh, arms and opposable digits capable of grasping in a way that a bear couldn't do. And it's just on a loop, so it's just, you know, I think it's like 45 seconds or, yeah, 55 seconds long. And there we go. The money shot, kind of. Yeah, if a tree falls in a forest and nobody's there to hear it, there's still a Bigfoot. Uh, so, I don't know, guys. I don't know. I mean, this is pretty good. This is, this, is, this is pretty compelling footage. But I really need to see somebody uh, zoom in on the face, if possible, and, you know, do enhancements, uh, etc. Because I can't really make out what I'm seeing there. I'm, I'm seeing what might be the head uh, there. But I can't really tell Jack. Uh, and I am Jack, so I should know. I can't, I can't tell what's going on in this video, guys. But it is super compelling footage of uh, what is a very possibly a Bigfoot uh, captured on a trail cam. All right, I've got to see it one more time. The smashing up the crime scene, smashing the tree. What was this crime scene, anyway? What... Why is why is Bigfoot uh, not liking this crime scene? What's go, what's going on? I mean, are we, are we, is, there, is there a murder here? Is there you know? I would love more information on this. Okay, I've got to, I've got to see him smashing the tree one more time. Hulk smash, Bigfoot smash. And there he goes. Boom, and you can you can hear the solid impact of that tree, very loud, solid impact, a very heavy tree. I don't think a human could have lifted that, uh, but let me know what you think. Uh, I, I just wanted to go over a couple of comments from David Grush uh, at the the private meeting that he had uh, with uh, sixty people, and I've already covered that meeting, so go watch the previous video on that if you, if you're so inclined. Uh, but uh, there's uh, one really interesting quote. Uh, that uh, uh, Grush revealed he and other officials were taught how to track uh, UAP in the atmosphere. There is a unique frequency or signature that the craft gives off. Isn't that juicy? I mean, we know they have some ability to track UFOs. Otherwise, how, they, how could they perform crash retrievals? How could they show up instantly when anomalous events occur? Clearly, they have some ability to track these objects. Uh, so, it was David Grush part of that? Was he tracking these? Uh, when they found one of these objects, what happened? Uh, did, did he dispatch a recovery team or report this to somebody that did uh, dispatch a recovery team? Uh, did that trigger the, the men in black to go around suppressing this stuff and uh, warning people into silence? You know, it's, it's very interesting. We don't know how connected to David Grush uh, that David Grush uh, was with all of that. Um, but it looks at least like uh, he was part of some sort of surveillance uh, of these objects. And I can't wait to find out more. Hopefully that op-ed will have some answers. Well, let me know what you guys think about all of this in the comments below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. I sure would appreciate it. Smash the subscribe button and the uh, notification bell. And uh, hit, uh, please become a channel member to support the channel and to see videos before everybody else. And uh, all that other good stuff. Uh, see you guys next time. This is Jack with Cosmic Road, signing out.